Brothers and sisters, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of my favorite comedians is named uh, Louis Black. He watched The Daily Show on a regular basis. You might know him. Uh, he's also had several HBO specials over the years and comedy albums. And those of you who know him might be wondering what right now. Why I'm bringing him up in a sermon, seeing as he tends to be more of a um, colorful than you might expect from the pulpit. I want to talk about it because a few years ago he came out with a comedy album called Anticipation, and it's a very simple premise. The build-up to a moment, the time waiting in anticipation for something to happen, that time was so good leading up to the moment, that moment was never going to live up to the hype that you had built it up. It was never going to be as good as that time you waiting for it. It wasn't going to be as great or amazing, as spectacular as you built it up to be. So we live in that moment of anticipation, that moment that we're waiting for. Because that moment we're waiting for really isn't going to be all that's cracked up to be. One of his examples that I'm sure many of us in the congregation will probably you know, feel sympathy with is playing golf. <laughs> Leading up to that round of golf, I know this personally, you never think you're going to go out there and play an egg. You think it's going to be finally that round where you put everything together. This will be the time you break 100 or 90 or 80 or whatever your goal has been. This will be the time where you finally hit all your drives straight and the ball will go where you want it and every putt will break just the right way. But then you get out there and tee up that ball and your first drive hooks into the woods and you start getting mad at yourself or mad in general or frustrated or whatever. That round of golf, instead of breaking 100 and being the perfect round of golf, bounce up with 140 on the scorecard and maybe a Ben Golf Club. <laughs> And we're living in a time of anticipation right now. Christmas is three days away. What day of the year has become more hyped, more built up to, than Christmas morning? The hype's been coming since before Thanksgiving. And then Christmas morning, coming into that living room with those nicely wrapped presents sitting under the tree. The anticipation of what is underneath. We're anticipating getting the perfect present, getting what we've been asking for, what we've been longing for. There's boundless hope wrapped up in that wrapping paper, covering up what really lies beneath. Finally, be that present I've been longing for. Will finally, be the thing I've wanted. And then that bit of disappointment that comes when instead of what we had hoped for, we don't get it. We get another tie, or another ugly sweater, or something else that will just go into a pile of box to be donated at Google at some point down the line. And now, in Advent, too, we're living in anticipation. This is the season of anticipation. This is the season of the coming of our Messiah. It's the time of the year where we're preparing ourselves for the Lord to come. We're preparing ourselves for Jesus to come again. It's an advent when we remember that we're patiently waiting for the time Christ will come to judge us. We are told to prepare the way, to get ready for the coming Messiah. Advent is reminding us that we are in a constant state of anticipation. Just as the people of Israel a state of anticipation at the time of Isaiah. It's a time of uncertainty. It's a long time since the golden age of Israel under David and under Solomon. It's been a long time since the prophets Elijah and Elijah came to turn Israel back from the worship of foreign balance. It's is an Israel that has been constantly beaten down by the armies of their neighbors. The northern kingdom has fallen. This is an Israel about to get conquered once more this side by Babylon, and the Jewish hierarchy will be taken captive and sent into exile. There are people longing for something, hoping for something. There are people in anticipation. That's where we pick up the reading tonight. 
today. A lot with Isaiah and King Ahaz. God tells King Ahaz through Isaiah that the Messiah is coming. He will come from Ahaz's house, the house of David. He will be named Emmanuel. He will know how to refuse people and choose good. He will return glory to God's people. And with the word of the Lord, Israel waited in anticipation for the Lord. They anticipated the coming of their new Lord through Babylonian captivity, through being freed by the Persians, through the reign of the Maccabees, through the coming of the Roman Empire. And so God came to an unsuspecting couple in the fulfillment of Galilee. And they have waited too. Joseph and his right to be married. Joseph, a descendant of King David and King Ahaz, a lowly carpenter, now that the royal line had long since been brought down. He's engaged to this young woman, and then he finds out that she's pregnant. And he is going to dismiss her. He's going to send her away very quietly so that neither his nor her honor is really tarnished by the fact that she's pregnant before they're married. He's planning on doing this until the angel comes and says, don't do this, David. Guess what? That kid is the Messiah. It's the one you've been waiting for. Don't worry, David. Don't worry, Joseph. He's just the savior of the world. Stay with your fiance. Don't cast her out. That's what he did. Jesus was born. The Messiah, the one God's people will call Emmanuel, God with us. Born out of the lot, line of David, the great rulers of Israel in David's town of Bethlehem. But not what you would expect. Not born into a palace, as we would expect someone from a royal line to be. Not born into great wealth or power as we would expect the savior of the world to be, but to a carpenter, his young soon to be bride. This is where our anticipation for what we think the Messiah will be and should be, and what the Messiah actually is in Christ. Well, it's something short of what we've been anticipating. We're expecting someone great Someone with great worldly power, a great king or a ruler, or a mighty warrior, or someone rich. If we were to come up with our ideal savior of the world, it wouldn't be someone born out of wedlock to a carpenter. But this is how God works. God comes to us through the unexpected and the holy. God turns the powerless into the powerful. God has no time. For earthly power or earthly wealth. God has no time for such things. So the Messiah comes to us in the form of Christ. And we still wait in anticipation. We wait in anticipation for Christ to come again to us. But Christ does come to us. And Christ comes to us again in the mundane. Christ comes to us in simple water, in the form of baptism which we'll be performing later today. Christ comes to us in simple bread and wine at the table. His body and blood given for us. Christ comes to us in the words of forgiveness that we will hear later on today. So while Christ might not be who or what we've been longing for or been waiting in anticipation for, it's no reason to be disappointed. It's reason to be glad. The way as Christ comes to us gives us more than we could ever ask for. The way Christ comes to us, joins us in the body of Christ, and gives us everlasting life. So don't stop anticipating Christ's coming. As Christ comes to us on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis. And don't stop anticipating Christ. Because unlike everything else in our life, every other moment that we've anticipated, it's so much better than anything we could have ever been.